Hey cats, Ed Midsole Bud here. Some of the more observant of you will notice that I'm no longer in the shoe sanctuary. I've had to move everything out of where I was recording my videos when your wife tells you to move all those flipping shoes out of the room and take all your stuff to the attic. You have to do it. Today I've got for you a longer run review of the Magnify Nitro 2 from Puma. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in people, always glad to see you. Help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and twinkling the bell of notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like, that helps a whole bunch and know it makes sense. So back up to 40 miles this week in preparation for the Great Bristol Half Marathon, which happens on May the 14th, lowering the intensity levels, but still putting yourself through the grind, you know, to keep the gears turning. Headed out in the Magnify Nitro 2, a shoe set to launch in July 2023. I've collated some more experiences for my viewers. Thank you for Puma for letting me test this one out early. Before I go any further, this is clearly the Optimus Prime of running shoes. Do you see it? You can't unsee it now, can you? A week of base level runs, this one today, 10 miles or around about 16K, eight minutes, nine seconds per mile or five minutes, four seconds per kilometer. So keeping things very sustainable today without pushing the effort too hard. I couldn't really do that anyway, because I had a gig the night before. It was pretty strenuous. A lot of you have been asking about my pedal board for my guitar setup. Here's a quick picture. My favorite pedals there, gotta be the diamond compressor. That thing is just awesome really evens out your playing and I love the Topanga reverb from Cattle Bread as well. That is one of the best spring emulations that you can get in pedal form. I really love the preamp as well, you can drive that slightly harder. It seems to drive the front end of the amp a bit more as well but maybe I should do a guitar channel. Yeah that would be a good idea. Let's get back to the shoes. Average heart rate today of 135 beats per minute, mainly on tarmac roads where possible. One hour, 21 minutes for the entire run. And it's about 341 foot of elevation gain there over the route. Pretty much up to this point in the year, training's been really erratic. Just can't get any consistency going. Lots of cold sneezes and sniffles in the house and quite a lot of broken sleep as well. I really need to get a good six to seven hours of sleep every day or I'm just a, a wreck. A winkle barge sinking off South End Pier. But I think the base level fitness is still there, so hopefully I can sprinkle in some faster miles and get a reasonably good time in Bristol. I do hope to bounce on from that Weymouth half where I did pretty well. I do know the course and I know what I'm letting myself in for. Good reasonable conditions out there today, round about 14C. Only a little bit of wind, a good test ready for next weekend. We should see some similar weather in Bristol. So how do these hold up in some warmer UK weather? Certainly finding the upper breathable enough thanks to that stretchy toe box. I think without that knit area there, I would suggest it could be a warm shoe. Let's not forget the temps are only going to rise as well. Hopefully though, not to the level that we saw back in the summer of 2022. It was absolutely baking here. Used a slightly thicker sock as it was all that was available. Fit was absolutely on point. And I feel the upper here will appeal to those who like a variable fit in terms of the pressure over your foot. Feel you can cinch the laces down a little bit more if you want to, making it quite tight. Or you can just dial things back a little bit too if you prefer a slightly more casual fit. I did both today actually. I started off with a more sort of loose casual fit and then about halfway through tighten things up to see how the shoe felt it's certainly a comfortable feeling upper the tongue is padded enough to negate any pressure and the shoe doesn't feel overtly plush that can be a trap in some of the more max cushion shoes that we see at the moment just too much padding in stuff like the adidas adi star or some of those brooks models as well i feel the magnify nitro 2 has got a way better upper than some of those shoes just a bit more enjoyable on foot really than the v1 nowhere near as much padding here and there just a well-crafted and clever iteration really puma have looked at what worked and kept that and then pushed aside some of the other things in a few ways it actually reminds me a little bit of the original Infinity React from Nike. Certainly in terms of that tongue area here, the material is very similar. I enjoyed the lockdown today. It could be down to the positioning of that power tape on the medial side. Just allows for a reduction in stiff upper materials, but it's still creating a little bit of structure there to keep the foot locked in. I think there's enough give in specific areas of the shoes, so I didn't get any real discomfort over the miles. 
no issues at all actually with my feet after today's run i would still suggest this one is true to size if you do want to pick it up on release i tend to allow for like a thumbs width at the front of the shoe and that's pretty much exactly what i've got here how do the midsole hold up on my longer run i have to say the nitro material here is a lovely soft and cushioned ride i wouldn't say it's extremely brittle or squashy really i think it's a balance of density here that absorbs the impact helps to preserve your legs a little bit but there's some resilience there from the foam as well i didn't really find it was bottoming out like some of the softer foams do after a few miles i think they've carefully selected the nitro formula here in the magnify 2 kind of in the same category as the a6 nimbus 25 though of course it's a good amount lighter than the a6 shoe again over that longer distance it did remind me a little bit of the nike infinity run there's a little bit more padding in the puma shoe it does have to be said and it's not relying on that avert rocker that we had here in the nike shoe there's certainly a lot more flex to the nitro foam though than react quite amazing really that they haven't really changed the infinity run at all over the course of like four or five years at speeds of eight minutes per mile the shoe is a nice steady cruiser though i did increase in speed over the course of the run today starting slower then ending up quicker well below eight minutes per mile just keeping things nice and sustainable really it was pretty warm by uk conditions very sort of humid type feel the shoe picks up pace well with its monstrous midsole stack though i think it is certainly for those easier days and the longer slower efforts it's never going to be the most nimble shoe from puma we got the slightly plusher upper here and that massive foam very interesting if you do shine a light up through the bottom of the shoe you can see there's a number of seemingly random holes dotted across the length of the midsole, perhaps to facilitate a little bit more squash and compression to the foam, stop it bottoming out. I do feel you can increase the pace if you want to though in the Magnify 2. Sometimes with a little bit more weight, a shoe can actually give you a bit more momentum, I suppose but I never really felt this one was bulky or clunky. Big difference to me though here between this version of the shoe and the original is the outsole. They've really improved things. The distribution of the rubber over the underside of the shoe has four segments they're positioned in the four corners of the outsole allow the shoe to flex a great deal more and because of this the shoe just feels that little bit more nimble just a bit less rigid underfoot it feels like you can sort of push off a bit better it doesn't feel like you've just got a big slab of rubber on the bottom of your foot it just allows for a bit more pace variation i suppose across your training just a more comfortable shoe on foot because of this there aren't too many opportunities for debris to get stuck in the rubber here either that's probably my only main major bugbear here in the forever run nitro those cutouts there do suck up some rocks and debris over time you don't really have that problem here as the cutouts aren't anywhere near as deep they're just more shallow got to be honest it's pretty simple layout there you've got the crash pad on the lateral side and the outsole just does the job it's nice and simple it's kind of like in the way that the pegasus outsole from nike is always pretty simple and it just works the terrain was somewhat shoe friendly today without any major rain or slippery surfaces to consider just left me without any hesitation in my foot strike it's nice and assured good grip really noted across the run i think puma have struck gold here in the outsole of the magnify 2 there's just a good balance between durability and the depth of the rubber lugs that we have here too in the forefoot i think you could probably use this shoe on a relatively daily basis you'll probably want something a bit more nimble for your pace days but for pretty much everything else it does the job it's no race shoe by any stretch and because of that we get a reasonable application of rubber here on the outsole so a good test today set myself up ready for a bit of a taper week bringing back the intensity somewhat and the magnify 2 left me feeling absolutely fine and that's what you want are you interested in picking up the magnify 2 from puma when it does release what are you using for your longer runs right now let me know down in the comments musical interlude time for you so first musical interlude in the new studio here it's got to be one of my most favorite albums great for relaxation harvest by neil young i have fond memories of listening to the first couple of tracks on this album with my good buddy chris who i used to live with back in bournemouth when i was at uni we used to crank out out on the weekend and harvest the title track as well are you ready for the country was a particularly well played track in our student digs we'd nip over to asda and come back with our spoils and then dance around listening to that track really varied album this one from neil young you've got some very quiet sort of acoustic type tracks 
sort of introspective material, I suppose. There's a couple of rockers on here too, more distortion. There's even a couple of tunes with an orchestra as well. So you've practically got everything that you could expect to hear from Neil Young. It's a really good sort of introduction to his music if you want to check him out, if you've never heard any of his stuff before. Go and have a listen, Harvest by Neil Young. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell of notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.